students, I am Lakshmi, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Philosophy, University of Kerala, Kariyavattam. So today, everywhere we hear about ethics. So in this video, I am trying to address the important question of the role of ethics in research or while doing research. What is research or why should one do research? It's for educational purpose. Our research we do to contribute to the domain of knowledge. But research is more importantly for the good of the society. So it involves, our research involves undoubtedly uh, the life situations of the human and other living beings. Anyhow, any research process involves relationships and whenever we have one-to-one -one relationships or human relationships or human animal relationships ethics makes its way hence there brings the responsibility to behave ethically in the context of research ethics so it comes from the mainly from the domain of biomedical uh, researches so it comes as a response to the abusive actions against the research subjects in the past. For example, the Nazi concentration camps, which all of us know. The selection of research subjects were mainly prisoners, orphans and mentally ill persons. So many of the researches were done even without the knowledge of these subjects. So they were not treated as subjects, but as mere objects. Maybe we can say a clear violation or a strict violation of the second maxim of Kantian ethics, where he says, treat everyone, including yourselves, always as an end and never as a means. That research is for knowledge explosion, a lot of unwanted practices or unhealthy practices were held in the name of research. So in 1948, the Nuremberg Code came up. Nuremberg Code announces the beginning of research ethics, I would like to say. So the declaration of Helsinki in 1964. So all these came up with the view that ethical responsibilities should be there in reporting, publication, etc. across various disciplines. Research ethics, there is one important question. Whether we have research subjects or research participants. That is whether the people involved in research who are, are uh, do take part in research, they are subjects or they are participants. It is a philosophical issue. Let me say. So in 1999, Professor Boynton suggested Subjects should be banned from research on humans and participants be used. Because in subject, there is an implication of subservience. It involves a kind of a power structure, a kind of a domination. But if we use the term participants, they are the ones who agree voluntarily to participate in studies or to take part in studies, who therefore are to be treated with highest standards of consideration and respect. Ethics, we can say, they are well-founded or accepted standards of behavior. So they take up the question, what is morally right and wrong, virtue and vice, etc. It always, or ethics always focuses on a social system in which the morals are applied. Ethics makes its way when there are a lot of codified set of rules which are to be internally defined and adopted. Why ethics when laws or rules exist? That's a very pertinent question. Because here there is no dearth for, or in our societies, there is no dearth for any laws. 
So when there are a lot of laws here, or policies are here, what is the need of ethics? So ethics goes beyond laws. So that's the truth. So can everything be imposed by laws or through the laws? Or do we need to inculcate certain values internally as a human being? Maybe as a responsible human being with a responsible behavior. And that gives the rationale for ethics and that gives the rationale for ethics in the context of research also. The challenge of ethics is how to reiterate between the different dispositions and to drive rational, coherent and consistent codes of behavior. Gellert Simpson suggests three conditions about one's actions being ethical. They are, number one, there are alternative courses of action. Number two, one is capable of judging the actions in ethical terms. And number three, one is free enough to choose what is considered to be ethically right. The ethical principles. So whenever we discuss about research ethics or applied ethics for that matter, four in ethical principles are important. They are autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice. These ethical principles are in fact derived from the great ethical theories put forward by Immanuel Kant, J.S. Mill, Jeremy Bantam or thinkers like Aristotle. So what are all these ethical, four ethical principles. So let us see one by one. Autonomy. The term autonomy stands for self-rule. So autonomy seeks to respect people as equal persons with their own choices and action values. It's an expression of rights. The second and the third ethical principles can be put together. They are either beneficence or non-maleficence that is whatever we do our actions or whatever steps or initiatives that we choose while doing research that should always be, be for the benefit of the society that should involve minimum risk or it shall never harm, harm the society or it shall never harm others so that is based on the consequentialist theory of ethics. Consci consequentialist theory of ethics says that we should decide the, whether our actions are good or bad in terms of the consequences that our actions bring. So that's how we have the two ethical principles, beneficence and non-maleficence. So it simply is to balance doing good against a risk of doing harm. So risk assessment, cost-benefit analysis, etc. All this mainly come under the purview of the principle of beneficence. Then there is the fourth principle, namely justice. That is, give every person equal and fair opportunities in life or fair practices in research and publication uh, should be followed. And this is in fact one of the very pertinent aspects relating to research ethics. Now while discussing about research ethics, especially the biomedical research practices, apart from these four ethical principles that we have seen, that is autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice, the ICMR guidelines the Indian Council of Medical Research guidelines on ethics, especially in biomedical research, are very, very important. So they include the principle of essentiality. The use of human participants is considered to be highly essential. Then principle of voluntariness, that is informed consent. So whenever we do uh, research by involving human participants, 
we should take informed consent from we should take consent from or they should be informed about the what all things we are or what is the purpose of research or what all uh, we uh, are we going to do with that particular questionnaire or part particular research so they should be properly informed and their sh consent shall be uh, received then principle of non exploitation that is research participants are equitably or they should be equitably selected then principle of social responsibility it is in no way social harmony uh, should be affected or our research shall never bring any kind of a disharmony in community relationships so that also we should take care of in privacy and confidentiality so privacy and confidentiality of the participants must be respected that must be ensured then principle of risk minimization it ensures that the risks involved are least so minimum risk or minimal risk is always the slogan of biomedical research then principle of professional competence only trained and competent per competent persons uh, they should be involved in the conduct of uh, research and then principle of maximization of benefit that is maximize always the benefits of the research participants or the society then principle of institutional arrangements that is before undertaking any research activity or research process it should be ensured that adequate facilities are available in the research centers then principle of transparency and accountability that is fair reporting and publication shall be followed stakeholders should respect the conflict of interest if any then principle of totality of responsibility that is all stakeholders involved in research are to be considered responsible for their actions then principle of environmental protection it is accountability for the protection of environment as well as the resources that we use while doing a research and then the ethical metrics so uh, with this brief introduction of the uh, research or the ethical principles there is the four cardinal principle ethical principles along with the icmr uh, guidelines or the uh, principles let us move on to the ethical metrics this is the three principles involved in research which are called the framework of ethical metrics include number 1 respect for well being number 2 respect for autonomy number 3 respect for fairness that is the balancing of principles that is relating to autonomy one can say it is kind of a self love then love of others may be justice then loving life or to loving to bring good and to bring no harm so these can provide the key to behave ethically so these ethical matrices or frameworks are they are highly applicable when on is in the process of a research then again some more concrete principles that we should take care of while doing research they include number 1 honesty that is the researcher should be objective and biased and truthful then fabrication should be avoided fabrication means cooking up of data so this is without properly doing any analysis or any properly collecting any data simply by cooking up data see sometimes some publications are being done or some outputs are being published so that should that is highly unethical that is fabrication of data then 
Another one is falsification. That is altered data or misrepresent data. Then obfuscation, patching up data from different resources. So all these are highly unethical practices in the context of research. So here again another thing is the Sokal affair. A very important one. So in Alan Sokal in 1996 he published an article transgressing the boundaries towards a transformative hermeneutics of quantum gravity in social text. So he published or he wrote an important article and later on he himself and when it was published he himself claimed that he only used certain bombarding words and there was the, and that paper in fact was not a properly researched one so that is so that should never happen then carefulness is a very important quality that a researcher should have that is avoiding human errors biases and conflict of interest while doing research and openness sharing of data sharing of results with co-participants then sharing of methods ideas or techniques and tools and freedom Creativity, we know, it originates from the freedom of thought and expression. So, researchers shall enjoy freedom, intellectual freedom, especially in order to come up with original ideas. Then, social responsibility is a value that every researcher shall cherish. Value of Research lies in what good one can bring to the society. So withholding data or denying access to information is totally unfair. Especially in publication ethics or after uh, doing research, of course the researcher wants to publish his work or publish his results. And research, of course, is always a teamwork. And here comes the important question, who is the author? So the authorship or the credit, so shall it be given to all the participants of the research? So who is an author? Or is research a linear process is the question. So while doing research, the unnecessary sensationalization should be avoided. So, while choosing who is the first author, it shall always be in such a way that the one who has really contributed, genuinely contributed, originally contributed to the findings of the research shall be given the due credit as the first author. And all others who have equally or significantly contributed to the research process, the names shall also be properly given credit or it shall be uh, they should also uh, get their due then bibliometric inflation should be avoided the bibliography should contain only the relevant materials that we have already referred to while doing the research process then redundant publication shall be avoided then personation or ghost writing is again another unethical practice we can see. That is taking the help of another person by giving him money or by giving him anything else for that matter. So that uh, the researcher uh, sees that he, he there is someone else for him to uh, write or for him to come up with this research articles. Then impeding the work of research work of others is also a very, very unhealthy practice in research.